Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another beginner touch designer tutorial. Today we're going to be creating this really smooth textural pattern that just organically grows and changes over time. Um, there is potential to make this audio active. We won't be exploring this in this tutorial, but if that's something you're interested in, I can definitely uh, throw that tutorial up on my Patreon. If you'd like to access this file just directly as it is, um, feel free to go to my Patreon and download it from there and you should be able to tweak it and do whatever you want. But uh, the point of this tutorial is pretty much to show you how easy it is to create something like this in Touch Designer. I'm using my friend's uh, image here as the source and I've zoomed in. Uh, this image has like a lot of variation in color, which works really nicely. But you can see even if I plug in a default Touch Designer file here and then zoom out, you can still get really nice colors and textures. It all just depends on the source or even if you want to use noise as a source here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start from scratch. Um, I'm going to get rid of these images here and we're just going to use noise today. Uh, but if you want to plug in your own image instead of noise, you can do so uh, and I'll show you when to do that. But yep, so starting off today's tutorial, um, just want to right click and I'm going to go ahead and hide the background for now. So right click, press tab, add in a noise node. In this noise node, you want to copy these parameters. Uh, the period needs to be turned up, that's probably the most notable one, along with 9.9 .9 for harmonic spread and harmonic gain at 0.58. And I believe the rest of these on default. You also want to make sure we set it to 4D simplex. That's because we're going to get this organic, like pulsing back in a fourth dimension that is something you can't really perceive. Um, but your, your texture also turn off monochrome should be looking a little something like this feel free to play around with these parameters make it however you like it's kind of just how I like it you can make it like a lot more modified or whatever it suits you uh, then under the transform tab we want to go to this translate 4d and type in abs capital T for time dot seconds and then multiply that by 0 0.1 uh, that's gonna translate the 4d dimension slowly over time which is giving that slow change that you can sort of see coming through you can make this faster by multiplying it by a larger number or slower by multiplying it by an even smaller number then want to connect this node to an edge and turn the strength way way up um, you could probably get away with a little amount of strength here but i just went absolutely overkill because i wanted like really well defined lines because that looks quite nice to me. And then I believe the rest is normal. Um, and that's going to give us this little textural pattern, which is just drawing all the edges that can bind. And there's not really any edges in this image anyway, uh, which is why we've turned the strength right up. But that gives us this really nice, natural sort of curvy pattern here, which has got tons of uh, implications, applications, sorry, of its own. I've then connected it to a feedback edge, which is one of these palette tools we have when you click this button and go to image filters and go feedback edge. That basically just um, adds a little bit of feedback that's growing naturally. I've tweaked the parameters slightly here, turned off the strength and you can copy the rest. And that will just give it a really, really soft overlay. I then have it connected to this blur. I have it disabled for the moment, but when I enable it, it essentially just gets rid of the edges and allows us to alternate between two different looks. So feel free to add this in and copy these parameters, but I just have it as bypass for now. Then the key to make this all work is you have the row we've just been following, I'm going to put that below, connected to the bottom part of a displace, and then the original noise parameter connected to the top one. If you want to use your own image, this is the point where you would plug in your top um, uh, node. So if I go ahead and grab a movie file and grab this banana, plug it into the top one there, you can see like that. And um, if we just plug in a different base file, you can see you can get that sort of effect. I'm going to switch back to noise because I prefer that. Uh, essentially, source midpoint leave as uh, the displaced weight. I have it at 0.5, just halfway. Um, you can turn that up if you want it a little bit stronger, like so. Or if you want it a little bit lighter, turn it down. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. 
Uh, this UV weight, which um, is counteracted by the offset weight, I did have sitting like really zoomed in because that's going to zoom in on a particular point and just grab. Uh, in this case, when we're using 3D noise, a 4D noise, it's going to just give us a very subtle color change slowly over time. So I have that zoomed right in, and then I also have extends it to uh, mirror. Uh, that's not super needed for this noise, as it's like a repeating texture, but for something like an image, a mirror is just going to give us nice edges when it's displaced on an edge, and so it's quite smooth, rather than a harsh line. I then have it connected to a bloom, which again is another one of these image filters here. Uh, I have the pixel format set to 11, that's quite important, and then I've just played around with the parameters here until I got this kind of nice little wee glow. If I wanted to make that glow more, I could drag down the threshold or keep the threshold low and just drag the glow up itself. Maybe even ramp if I want some colors. And yeah, just play around and tweak with that to your liking. And then that's pretty much it. This is just a null here that I've named option two because I was exploring a bunch of options. But you can see that uh, I've then just connected it to movie file out. And that's pretty much the whole tutorial. I just, really wanted to create something extremely short and sweet and hopefully that is easy to follow uh, if it's if you prefer me to build these networks from scratch then please let me know uh, otherwise if you want this project just go ahead and download it from patreon but again this is such a super simple tutorial i hope it's been easy to follow um, please play around with the displace i reckon you'll get a lot of cool effects going on in there and if you're interested in making this audio reactive, any of these little sliders that you're dragging around here are parameters that you can assign to different frequencies or um, actions in a song or whatever it is. So definitely worth exploring that. And if you want a separate tutorial on just making things audio reactive, definitely open to exploring that as well. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and um, subscribe for more beginner touch tutorial touch designer tutorials and if you're in the mood for something a little bit more challenging please let me know and I'll be open to giving that a shot as well see ya